new to the game, and I'm building an army and slowly painting it. Now, I fancied some terrain, not only so my boys have something to pose on in their IKEA display cabinet, but also so that when I'm playing games, I have something to bring, and aren't mooching off of every other player out there. I looked around online, and Etsy has some excellent 3D printed material, but as a great man once said, If you want something done, do it yourself. Now on a recent rock climbing trip, in camp, I broke my favourite Union Jack mug. Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god! I ordered a new one online and it arrived in this polystyrene container. And I realised, wait a minute, do these two pieces look a little bunker-like? Why yes, yes they do. Then I remembered the opening credits for Letters from Iwo Jima. And that's what I want, to turn them into broken up, derelict, weathered, torn old bunkers. You know, see, I grew up near a World War II airfield. All our parents said to never go near it. So of course, all us kids spent every day creeping around in the bunkers and tunnels playing war. So I have some nostalgia for these battered old war memorials. I started looking around at the various techniques that the expert terrain builders have been using to create concrete and other effects. So now I'm going to try one, one that's a little more ragged to get that eroded by years of exposure to the elements kind of look. One of the halves suffered a little more damage in transition than the other, thanks Posty. So I ran a few little experiments on that one, ditched it, and now I'm moving on to the real deal. So let's do this thing, my first bit of terrain. Let's rock! Okay, that may have been a little too amped up. First up, let's mark out the openings. The one on the front is going to be angled inward, while the ones on the side will be more flat with less protection but more visibility. I want this as a kind of defend against frontal assault bunker. At first I tried just cutting like normal, but this sucked. A gentle sawing motion was much more effective and I just popped out the pieces and set them aside so I might use them later to create rubble or extra bits, I don't know. Then, at the rear, an opening for a steel vault-like door. So I started measuring in from the sides, and well, the lines were a little wonky. And then, oh wait, you know, I could just put a set square on the tabletop and get a perfect 90 degree angle, duh. Still, at least I figured it out eventually and got some nice cuts. Some touches with a nail file to get rid of the loose balls and smooth out the openings. I advise wearing some earplugs or turning up the telly because this noise was really grotesque. Almost as bad as this. Now the technique I'm going to try is one that employs a heat gun, which in of itself sounds pretty sci-fi. I grabbed this thing ages ago from a second hand store to help put a custom skin on my snowboard of that HR Geiger picture of babies, but I never got round to it. Now the gun can fulfill its destiny after years dwelling in the back of my closet. Wafting the flow over the surfaces causes them to initially bubble up, which was awesome as it looked like the cobblestones atop the Iwo Jima bunkers, but I wanted to go more weathered, so I kept applying. The indentations on the sides. I was going to use these to make areas of serious damage, like a missile or artillery strike. Because these areas were going to be more messed up, I had more wiggle room to screw up. So I started here because I could judge just how long I needed to apply the heat before it really began to mill. Once I figured that out, I started on the rest of it. Here's a close up of how that process looks, speeded up of course. It was a case of go slow and be patient. The moment from flattening out to it melting away is very, very brief. Okay, let's see how this technique works. A couple of spoonfuls of Kills Primer, and I use my big fat base coat brush to get the rest off before adding grouting sand. Stir it up. Now I found that too little and you don't get much texture, too much, and it turns into a solid, unusable mass. I dabbed it on rather than wiped because it got streaky and looked more like paint rather than concrete. I made sure to get it into all the nooks and crannies to get that nice torn up battered by the elements coastal sea fortress look. I also didn't want to skip the inside for several reasons. One, because I'm going to use a spray can for the varnish and I don't want to make this entire thing and have the spray go through the openings and melt it from the inside out. I don't know if that's even possible but nope, not risking it. Two. 
I wanted to paint the inside dark, so even from above and from afar, when looking down, it appears gloomy inside. And three, so no perfectionist puts their rival right up to my terrain and gives me grief for being able to see bare naked styrofoam inside. With the whole thing covered and the mixture hardening, I decided that the two indentations were just a bit too symmetrical, so I squeezed up a ball, wedged it in, and infilled one of them. Now while this dries, I'm going to start playing with my door, which I want to have as a sort of barrel hinge affair. This was my main inspirational design, with a bit of this one chucked in. So, I cut out a bit of bog standard cardboard the same size as the opening. This is going to be the frame. Then I cut out a smaller piece to form the door itself. Next, a piece the same size as the door, but a U-shape. The missing side will be taken up by the pin, which I made from a common cotton bud Q-tip with the ends cut off and glued into place. One of the leftover strips of cardboard, cut into four small bits, gives me the knuckles for the hinge. Chuck the cardboard into the hole punch to get a nice perfect circle to act as the hatch covering for the viewport. Whilst shopping at the craft store for basic supplies, I spotted these containers of these things called diamond dots. Little half domes. Them's not art, them's grim dark rivets. With tweezers, I dabbed them into a blob of Elmer's and set them in place around the perimeter. Now as many people have, I snagged a bag of pipes and wanted to use one here. Water, waste, maybe an armoured power conduit for a multi-melter or plasma cannon, who knows, who cares. A circle of Elmer's and I applied a strip of cardboard that I cut to size. Because I'm too impatient to sit here and hold it, I raided my fridge, because my local Safeway uses these skinny blue rubber bands to hold vegetables together, and so my spring onions are now loose and free to ensure this stays in place. Now while it dries, another ring of rivets applied around the other end, and back to the door. Because it's cardboard, I went straight in with a nice layer of Abaddon Black and smothered the entire thing. And then using some RB Painter Primer, I gave the pipe a nice layer, and then once dry, I covered it too with Abaddon Black. Now, on with a nice dry brush of Army Painter Mithril Silver to bring out the edges, rivets, and pins. I actually bought a shiny primer and gave it a test toast, but then the silver was useless. You just couldn't see it. So yep, making something actually shiny didn't cut it. Why have it shiny? When you can paint it matte, and try and make it look like it's shiny. This hobby is truly for the deranged. And I love it. Now, I've had this roll of wire for decades. No idea where it came from, but no matter how much I use it, it just never seems to run out. So with pliers, I bent it and contorted it and left a nice flat stretch and then snipped it off. Added a dab of Gorilla Super Glue and stabbed it into the impact crater and adjusted it for a nice look. Concrete rules against compressive and shear stress, but sucks at tensile stress. Reinforce the bars of steel, rebar, roll at handling tensile stress. Put them together and lo, we have reinforced concrete. Okay, blow it up and that rebar gets exposed. Now for additional battle damage. I played around with nails and pins, but what worked best for me was a mechanical pencil. Jabbing it in and wiggling it around created some excellent bullet holes. For larger damage like bolter fire, a humble papermate ballpoint pen worked wonders. The metal tip goes deep to create the penetration and the plastic bit pushes in to create a nice impact crater around it. Liquidex basics acrylic. A squirt of black, a squirt of white and mix them up and start dabbing it all over the dry kills and grouting sand mixture. And of course, then get it all on the inside as well. I added some white and began dry brushing across the entire thing, then a bit more white and started in on the edges for the areas of damage and along the sides and all the other edges. I lined it up some more and did it again to really make it pop. And added some black washes in the creators to make them look a bit more scorched. Now onto the bolter and small arms fire. I plunged a brush into some Abaddon black and shoved it in and jiggled it around to coat the entire tunnel. Then I dabbed some white scar around the exterior and blended it around with some water. This created a nice contrast of a deep dark hole, a lighter crater, and then the grey of the concrete. Some delicate token white dry brushes on some edges and another nice little wash to really highlight the darkness of the large areas of damage. Now some mithril silver on the rebar. Silver? Why yes, I figured that by the 41st millennium they found something as strong as steel that doesn't rust. 
Actually, to be honest, it's because I'm in the Pacific Northwest and I'm sick of the sight of bloody earth tones. I want no rust on any of my terrain. Now it's time for my Imperial Bunker to pledge its allegiance. I chucked a piece of cardstock in the printer and printed an Aquila and then used an X-Acto knife to cut it out. I placed the stencil a little askew to make it look hastily applied, like these bunkers were made in a rush as the enemy forces drew close. The focus was being on making the bunker, not so much on perfectly placing an aligned insignia. You know, they just slapped it on at the last second and then got in and slammed the door shut. I gave it a dry brush of flash gits yellow, focusing on the edges. I had it facing this way back towards friendly lines so I know incoming air support can look down and see it's one of theirs so unless they're going danger close, please don't drop ordnance on me. A cheap alphabet stencil and I'm picking a B because you know what, this has been a lot of fun. I think I'm going to try and salvage that busted up first piece and that's therefore going to be bunker A. I couldn't figure out how to get it on here and was about to cut it and then realized it's well bendy and so I had no bother adding another B by the door to help identify it to reinforcements coming up from behind. I added a couple of tufts of army painter foliage and here we go. My first ever bit of terrain and I'm quite chuffed with it. Looking forward to trying some other techniques. And also, here is the finished product of the original experimental one that I was going to just chuck. I figured this one is an older prototype, so the openings are large and the door is bigger and it's more battle damaged. And to indicate age, it is succumbing to nature as grass begins to creep across it after it fell to the Xenos filth. <laughs> 